The, um, it's uh, it's uh, now entering um, autumn. Uh, it's not all it's not all over. Um, certainly, uh, what I'm looking at now is the, is the winter garden. So, um, so I'm going to be doing. Um, I've got a load of things like chervil and spinach and um, uh, the uh, lettuce. There's a special type of lettuce called Grenoble Red. Which is quite uh, fairly hardy. I'll be putting some fleece over it, so um, things like that. Uh, so, but of course, I've got to clear a space uh, for it to um, to go in the ground. Because I mean, um, if you wait too long, you won't be able to establish. You'll get a little bit bigger, uh, which means it will um, winter or hit, and it will be tiny and it will die. So, um, so I'm getting it now, even though there's plenty in the garden still still doing its thing, it seems um, quite a harsh thing to do because you're turning your garden upside down but um, I've got to prepare for, if I don't, I do this every year, if I, if, if I don't do it then um, there won't be anything to eat early spring and there won't be the odd morsel over winter so I'm going to, uh, going to be doing it now um, even though it means wrecking things, they're still going from the summer uh, so, uh, as you saw in the last video, there's um, a couple of courgettes that I told didn't buck their idea of some deers, deers up they were going. One of them didn't listen, and he's going today. The other one did, uh, harvested three ma three massive courgettes. So, um, and it's producing more. So, um, I don't think it's the me threatening, and um, I think it's the uh, the feeding regime. I've been. Uh, making um, compost tea and using that regularly, sort of like twice a week. And uh, it's up of it. I think that's, I think that's the, the, the secret um, for me. It's what works for me. Uh, it's because a lot of uh, I found in a lot of years I get luscious growth up to my June, it's overwintered from the previous year, and then suddenly everything stalls. And I think it's the feeding regime. So we want to be organic and we want to be sustainable. So I need to make more compost um, to be able to do that during the summer next year. But, um, but yeah, that's the plan. Um, also, uh, as uh, in the last video, I was um, talking about all the plants I was buying for indoors. So over the winter, I've been videos about preparing well in the sense that they're being potted up into um, uh, into material that's uh, compost, it's half compost, half grit um, and they're also ceramic um, pots so there's plenty of drainage, if it, if it doesn't go through the grit it'll go through, also goes, uh, you know, um, terracotta's um, it's got pores in it so it, it, water makes its way through so that's another way that you can dry out plants a lot of time most of the time when you kill a plant indoors it's because it's waterlogged it'll rot in in wet compost so we'll be doing that I'll also maybe um, be doing more um, on this channel uh, I also do some trade union advice um, basically workers rights employment law um, advice and I may very well be doing that on this channel as well just keep me busy over the winter because there'll be less to do um, and I don't know whether you're interested in, in, in that or not. Most of us work, uh, so there may be, and, and most of us have seen a, a restructure or been threatened with redundancy, things like that. So, I, as a, as a trade union, I'm a trade union rep for um, a, a major public sector uh, trade union, so I do a lot of, a lot of um, work um, doing restructures, um, consulting on that, and representing people. So, I can. Um, so I, I've done the odd video teaching people how to um, help themselves get out of trouble, to, to sort of work out what it is that management are doing to them and to see what, uh, see what the law thinks and, uh, and the law basically gives you avenues with which to assert your rights and uh, I can teach you how to take those. Um, so I don't know whether it's appropriate because people who come to this channel are interested in gardening but I may very well get bored, uh, you know. I'll concentrate on one channel, so I'll have a bit. There won't be too many of them, but I want to. I want to do them because I think it's useful for people. Um, 
it may not be useful for you, is it? If it isn't, just you know, just ignore them. Going, um, uh, nothing too political. It's just stuff about you know looking out, uh, you know, looking after yourself in in today's um, difficult uh, employment um, right situation in England. But anyway, yeah. Um, so today uh, I'm preparing. This evening I'm preparing uh, the back garden. I'll be tearing stuff up. Um, so I'll be preparing. Uh, the garden to receive things like lettuce, chervil and so on uh, so, uh, and I'll be bringing in, I've got purple basil over there and the um, which you can overwinter indoors, it's perennial, it's big woody stalks uh, you can overwinter, it likes to die it's a bit like chilies, they like to die as well but it's basically, you've got nothing to lose by trying um, and if you lay down the ground by, by really really porous soil then you can, um, you've got a good chance of not overwatering I'll be bringing them in and the um, Vietnamese coriander and harvesting a couple of things. I might harvest those leeks over there and um, and digging up uh, at least one of the, the courgettes because it didn't do very well. Uh, and then we'll get the lettuce and so on in. Right, so I shall, um, I shall get on with it. Uh, this, um, this one has had one uh, courgette in it. So it's, it was a big cool jet. And uh, there are some female flowers, I think, but it's too late. They refuse to listen to me. So I think I'm. So the roots didn't uh, don't look like they um, they kind of came up way too easily. I'm wondering whether or not there's something wrong with the roots, waterlogged or something. But anyway. The um, just seen the, these have been here for some time and they've um, they've uh, seeded. So I'm keeping some seed. This is type of mallow, an edible mallow, and it's a variety, <coughs> excuse me, it's a variety um, that's found, uh, North Africans eat it a lot, so you find this in France, um, in markets in France, um, catering to the North African um, hunter, so um, just basically wait until these, these are the flowers, so you've got flowers here, they're insignificant. Uh, but they turn into seed pods like this. Don't know you can see them. And you just basically pull them off, and then the seed drops out. So I'm keeping a bit of this, and I'm going to at the end this. I want lettuce here. So um, don't mean I need a massive amount. I may as well. At least it saves it from being all over the. saves it from being all over the garden when I compost it so um, that's that's the mallow The uh, soil underneath that straw is just beautiful. The straws um, produce really fluffy soil on top.
Uh, like uh, Charles Dowding, he's uh, one of my heroes. He, he plants them quite deep, so they don't just flop. Um, so I do that. I do the same. It seems to work. I plant the best ones. I'm planting them amongst the um, amongst the tomato because tomatoes will be coming up soon. I expect they'll catch blight soon anyway. So uh, when the tomato goes, it's called relay planting. When that, when that goes, these will carry on. These will be established and be uh, cropping. Hopefully. Sort of three, uh, four inches apart. This is coriander, sown um, 8th of August. And it's doing nicely. Now I'm going to do quite a dangerous thing, which is uh, separate them. Weed in them. Yeah. Uh, they don't particularly like set, um, being separated. But I'm going to do it and then try and grow them on strongly. So uh, they may bolt, but if they bolt, we just deal with it. We just chop them back, eat them. Uh, I'm not going to go too mad, so I'm going to take two of these here. Try not to stab them too much. Quite deeply. Uh, these um, these ugly specimens are Egyptian walking onions. Um, looking worse for wear, but they're um, like spring onions or shallots that, on the end of stalks, grow um, uh, grow bulbils or bulblets, and we're going to plant these. Um, they're pretty hardy. Uh, and they'll provide either spring onions. I'll eat, I'll eat them as spring onions and then let one or two grow to produce more of these. And interesting enough, they go on the top here like this, um, top here like this, and then they go on, they can produce a second uh, stalk or even a third, oh, knocking it all off, producing um, bulbils. But yeah, so let's, let's, um, let's go and plant these in. You, um, you can separate these and plant them individually, but I'm just going to put them in, in the clumps and they'll, they'll grow, grow happily. Um, you want to get the base plate in, sort of touching soil. I like that. Uh, these are uh, beetroots. I don't know whether this is going to work or not. If it doesn't, uh, it's not a beetroot. Try that. Um, all that. If it doesn't work, we'll 
at least what uh, to create beats at least what we'll get is um, some uh, leaves because beets and chard are basically the same thing so oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's too many there. One, two, three, four, that'll probably do. Well, uh, thanks for thanks for watching. Um, uh, please um, uh, subscribe. Uh, what do they call it on Facebook? Where you press that red button that says I want to keep watching. If you um, yeah, leave comments, uh, subscribe, etc. That'd be great. Um, I shall see you next time.